Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial on solving quadratic equations. Um, I might just start first looking at how to solve a normal equation. I mean, we've been through this for I don't know how many years. Um, you know, very simple things like I guess uh, you know x plus three equals five. Um, first of all, what's the whole idea of solving an equation? Well, we want to find the value of the unknown letter. So in this case, it's the value of x. Um, it's a nice, easy question because obviously here we want to get rid of the plus 3. So we take over the other side. So we're simply just left with the x. Remember, we want to isolate the x so we have simply x equals. So we take it from both sides. We're left with x equals 2. And often we can chuck it back in and try it and just check our answer. 2 plus 3 is 5. So look, very, very basic stuff. Now, what about a, a slightly more challenging question like this? 3x equals 0. Well, hopefully you might recognize that in order to get rid of the 3 and the x, what's bonding it together, what's holding it together? Well, there's a times in between. So what's the opposite of times 3? Well, it's divide by 3. So x equals 0. Now that's quite important because this is something a concept we'll be using um, coming into the next uh, sort of questions. Um, our answer is 0 because 3 times 0 equals 0. So if I'm timesing two things together and the answer is going to be 0, one of them has to be 0. For example, if I have 5x equals 0, we can straight away say x equals 0 because that's the only way that this left hand side can be equal to the right hand side, I guess. Um, you know, even if I did something like this, a times b equals 0. We know that one of these two, one of them, has to be at least a zero. One of them. Okay? In that case, obviously, we don't know which one, but one of them has to be. Um, okay, so likewise, we could have something on the left hand side here, put x plus 3 um, equals zero. And this is another fact that we'll be looking at. What does x need to be? Well, x is simply minus 3. Okay, well, obviously we can do that from there. Um, x equals minus 3 from that way, but obviously I can just look at there and say, well, I know what x is going to be. It's going to be minus 3. We can look at it. Again, you might think, why have I looked at that really basic uh, example? Because that's, uh, that's, that's very easy. Well, that's true. Um, it is very easy, but there's a reason for me looking at it. I'm going to look at that next. Harder questions. Obviously, the title of today's tutorial is looking at quadratic equations. So, what's what's a quadratic? Well, a quadratic we know is a variation of x squared. Okay, it's got x squared in the actual uh, in the expression. Now, none of these are all. This isn't an equation at the moment because we haven't got uh, an equal sign. So, we're going to solve this question: four x squared plus eight x equals zero. Now, previously we've been able to factorize this and when you're solving uh, quadratic equations it's all about factorizing first um, just like what you have been doing with normal uh, expressions so what goes into 4x squared and 8x remember your very first thing we look for a common factor well the common factor is 4 and the common factor is x they both go into it okay what would go inside my brackets well 4x times x makes 4x squared plus 4x times 2 makes 8x equals 0 now we looked at a brief thing before, which might have seemed a little bit confusing, something like this. We said was 3x equals 0, where we're timesing both of these two things together. And so automatically I knew that the x had to be 0 because I can't times by anything else to make it 0. So likewise, what we say for this, obviously we've got 4x outside of x plus 2, which means 4x times the x plus 2. In order for this to equal 0, we know that one of these two things here has to equal 0. Has to equal zero. One of them has to. Um, because that's the only way that when I times these two things together, the answer can be a 0, if one of them is a 0. So we say, well, how do I know which one is a 0? Well, we don't. So what we've got to do, we end up giving often two different solutions. X could be this, or it could be that, depending on which of these two brackets equals zero. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the case at 4x equals zero. Well, if 4x equals zero, so this bracket here, this equals zero, well, 4 times x has to equal zero. So if x 
would have to automatically be zero, because any way that can this whole left hand thing here can be zero, or this thing is if the x is zero, because four times zero is zero. But what happens if the right hand side? We'll put an LHS here. What happens if the right hand side was equaling zero? Well, that would mean we've got x plus two equals zero. Well, what would x equal? Well, x would obviously have to equal minus 2 because minus 2 plus 2 makes 0. So I've got two different solutions so what we say x could equal 0 or negative 2. Now look this is a really hard concept to, to first grasp but all we're trying to work out is that we're covering both cases that the left hand bracket was equaling 0 or the right hand bracket would equal 0 because we know that one of them has to. So in this case we say that x equals 0 or negative 2. These will get easy as we go through them. Okay, so again, this is an expression. We're going to put equal zero. That's the question. Okay, equal zero. X squared plus five x plus four. Now, which comes back to our solving quadratics or our factorizing quadratics. First step: is there a common factor or number? No. Second step: is it difference of two squares? Well, there's three different terms here. So this was probably going to be what we call a quadratic trinomial, which you will uh, factorize in lots of different ways. Um, you may remember me doing this one in class product is 1 times 4 which is 4 the sum is 5 so two numbers that multiply together to give 4 but add together to give 5 all those two numbers are 4 and 1 because 4 times 1 is 4 4 times 1 is 5 now because it's just an x squared question we can actually simply say x plus 4 in one set of brackets and x plus 1 in the other set of brackets now previously when we just factorized it that was our answer but now we've actually got an equation because we've got this equals zero business. Now, like I said, the last thing, we've got two different brackets here. We've got this bracket, and then we've got this bracket. And what we're saying is that if we times these two things together, the answer equals zero. So like the last question I said, that we know that one of these two brackets has to equal zero. They have to. Because that's the only way that when I times them together, it equals zero. So let's look at both cases. We're going to look at the first bracket. Well, if that left-hand bracket, x plus 4, it would have to equal zero, well, x would have to equal negative 4, wouldn't it? Because we want to make this to be zero. So the only way that can happen is minus 4 plus 4. What about the right-hand bracket? What could x be in order to make x plus 1 equaling zero? Well, negative 1. And what you start seeing is that in order to solve these equations, once you've got these brackets here, most of the time, if it's just an x there, okay, it's that other number, but it's the opposite. So opposite of plus 4 is minus 4. Okay, So again, what we're trying to figure out is what x is in order to make that left-hand so bracket 0 or that right-hand bracket 0. All right, let's have a look at another question. Okay, x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. That's the question. Okay, so likewise, again, we go through our process, a common factor, there's none, the difference of two squares, that's not it. So let's try our product and our sum method. So we've got negative 12 for our product, and our sum is 4. So we can either have 3 times 4, that can't make 4. 6 times 2, yeah, 6 minus 2 makes 4, and multiply together, give minus 12. It's a shortcut question, so x plus 6 x minus 2 but remember there's that equaling 0 on the end of it so this time we're actually solving this question just like the last question we need to figure out what x is going to be so that this left hand bracket here equals 0 well x equals minus 6 doesn't it because minus 6 plus 6 is 0 but what happens if the right hand bracket was equaling 0 well then x would equal 2 because 2 minus 2 makes 0 see you're hopefully you're starting to get the hang of it then we get to the last question we've got here. So 2x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. Again, we can only really do these questions at the moment if it equals 0. Okay, And this will be all the cases that you get. It will always equal 0. Okay, so let's have a look. Again, no common factor, um, not a difference of two squares. So let's try our product and our sum. 2 times negative 3 is minus 6. Our middle number is simply 1. So we're looking for 6 and 1. No, 3 and 2 will work. 3 take away 2. Now, this is not a shortcut question because there's a number in front of the x squared. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 3. Make sure we put that equal 0 on the end of it. 
factorize left hand and right hand side so um, x goes outside of 2x plus 3 negative 1 outside of 2x plus 3 because negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 equals 0 my brackets are the same so 2x plus 3 brackets x minus 1 equals 0 now this is a more challenging question you might ask why it's not simply because of the product and sum we had to split the middle term into the 3x minus 2x that's not why this is challenging what this is challenging is when we're solving it because remember we said we want to make both brackets equaling 0 for each case now the right hand side bracket is nice and easy because it's obviously x would equal 1 because 1 take away 1 equals 0 but this is the first case we've seen this thing here where there's been a number before it was just if it was x plus 3 it'd be minus x plus 3 sorry uh, minus 3 but it's slightly more challenging and it's, what we're actually doing is this 2x plus 3 equals 0 now often we can do it in our head but this one's a bit more challenging let's have a quick look at it um, in order to get rid of plus 3 we take away 3 so that gives us 2x equals minus 3 and the opposite of times 2 is divide by 2 okay so x equals minus 3 over 2 and this is what a trick you're going to find is that obviously if this is a plus then my answer is going to be minus or if my answer is a minus it's going to be a plus so that's the first thing we can see now often if it's just um, an x then it's whatever that number is going to be so if it was x plus 3 it would just be the minus 3 but if there's a number in front of it we then divide it by that number okay that's a bit hard to understand I, I, I know um, let me just say what happens if I, I mean if I had something like this I solved a, a different equation to be 3x plus 4 and let's say um, 2x minus 6 equals 0 and we had factorized it to get to that point well what I would know for the first for the left hand side bracket well that's a plus so I don't have to be a minus and it's a minus 4 but then I'm dividing it by the 3 to get rid of the, um, the 3 in front of the x or now this is a minus 6 we know it's going to be a plus 6 but then I want to divide it by 2 which that could actually simplify down to be 3 couldn't it and so my answer would be um, negative 4 over 3 or simply just 6 over 2 is 3 that would be my solutions okay sometimes you'll see people or often people will actually write the solutions like that but it doesn't really matter okay look that's a it's a pretty hard concept I, I suggest you go over and do lots of different types of these questions um, it, again it's going to take you a little while to get used to solving these hopefully the factorizing should be nice and easy now but it's going that n extra step in solving the equation um, so that uh, that we can find out what x is going to be okay is tough but promise me it gets easier keep at it